couple of years ago, my family and I took the opportunity to work remotely out of Maui. And rather than just go on vacation for a week, we actually lived there for about six weeks. And so we lived in Kihei, but spent a ton of time in Lahaina. And we worked early in the morning and then played all day. And so our Hawaii experience was fun and amazing and it was tropical, right? So my last recollection of Lahaina was this joyous paradise. And then when I saw the footage of the fires in Maui, in Lahaina specifically, and to, to know that the entire town is gone, uh, that, that really connected me with, with Maui. For me, the, I think I'd, I met Fred when I was 14. Um, started to coach me, high school football coach. Um, kind of going through a rough time with family stuff, and they took me in, it was just a mentor to me. Um, treated me like family. And uh, Fred grew up in, grew up in Maui. Um, his whole family's still in, still in Maui. And uh, I'd heard the stuff about the fires and had seen the footage and stuff on TV and the, the destruction. Um, but after talking to Fred and Angie, um, and hearing like firsthand the accounts of what really happened, like what the people are still struggling with. Um, I just felt like I wanted to, to help because they've been so much help and influential in my life and in, in the community. Um, you know, they not only lost their, their home, but they lost their places of work. They lost friends, um, people in their ward. Um, that are still missing. Um, so we just wanted to try and do anything that we could to, to try and help and, and give back. Yeah. <clears throat> so years ago when the idea of Coke & Cares was started and I had this desire to form a humanitarian organization. So Koken is a Japanese word which means contribution. And I wanted to create something that like I could identify what, what my contribution was, but also like anyone, yourself included, right? So what I've been doing mostly for the last couple of years is raising funds to drill wells around the world so that people could have fresh, clean water. But when you presented this opportunity of, hey, let's do this four by four by 48, specifically for a fat family in Maui, and that mattered to you, I was like, oh, that's awesome. So let's raise money under the umbrella of Coke and Cares for the Takiaho family. And that's what your contribution is, and we're here to support that, compared to my contribution of drilling wells around the world, right? So having an organization that can be an umbrella to, to help both of us live out our dreams and have a, a, a way to facilitate that, that's pretty exciting to me. Yeah. The, the one other thing, um, the reason I wanted to do the 4x4x48 um, as well is we've just got so comfortable in our society we go from our air-conditioned work to our air-conditioned car to our air-conditioned homes. Um, and as soon as we hit discomfort, we tend to stop. And I had the opportunity to do a few hard things. I did a 60-mile race um, a few years back. And I didn't think it was possible, but pushing through and doing that gave me a whole new confidence of what I'm capable of. And I really wanted to try and get others to be able to experience that confidence that comes from doing something that you don't think you can do. Um, and so I wanted to kind of create a container where people could come, community could come, maybe they wouldn't do it on their own, but with a little, with a little bit of coaxing, um, we could make it happen. Because uh, I know that the, the joy and the fulfillment that'll come from completing something that is extremely difficult, running through the night, you're not gonna wanna do it. You're gonna be sore, you're gonna be tired, you're gonna cramp up, um, but just, pushing through that mental barrier and doing it is there's something great on the other side of that. Yeah. So to me the 4x4 by, by 48 is different than most like ultra endurance events. You know, you take a look at people that run ultra marathons, the 50, the 100 milers, and very few humans can do that. You you have to train for like years to be able to work your body up to that talent. But the 4x4 four by, four by 48 like anyone can do it. Literally, yeah. even if you're not active, you can get up one day and walk for four miles, rest for three hours, walk for four miles. Like it is physically demanding. I, I, I'm not going to take that away, but it's not impossible. So anybody can do it. And 
So for me, it's more about mental toughness than mm -hmm. physical ability. Um, I've just I've made a goal for myself to twice a year um, do something really hard physically um, that that pushes me past my limits. Um, and I've got a couple friends that are kind of committed to doing stuff like that. So we always, you know, we read David Goggins' book. You hear other podcasts and other crazy stories. And so we're always just throwing out, throwing out all these ideas of something fun to do. Um, and the 4x4x48 had been on my radar for, radar for a while. So we had just decided that we were just going to send it, that this fall, once it cooled down a little bit, we were going to do it. And we were just going to invite anyone in the community that wanted to join, any friends. To, to join and just really feel like what it feels to, to do that something hard. Because 95% of people really never push themselves to that point that they don't think they can anymore and, and go further than that, right? They think their max is at 40% of what they're really capable of. And so the, the goal behind it was just to get a few like-minded friends to get together and kind of be able to create an experience. And we were, Steve was one of those friends that I thought would probably be on board. But be stupid enough to say yes. So, yeah, mo most people tell me no when I come up with the crazy ideas. Um, but we were down at Lake Powell, a bunch of guys. Everyone was in a good mood, so I figured it was a time to throw down in, in front of everybody. So I had to say, Steve, we're doing a 4x4x48. Four four you want to do it? I don't even think he knew what, what it was, but he's like, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Great stuff. So you actually caught me at a good time because um, so I had I'd recently watched a video of a of the twenty nine oh twenty nine, and I don't know if you know what that is, yeah. but so a couple of years ago, my son and I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, and it was it was really hard. The challenge of it was the oxygen deprivation. It was physically challenging, but most of it was oxygen. And after we did it, someone asked if I was going to climb Everest next. And I was like, no way, people die on that. There's, I had zero desire to climb Everest. And then I saw this video of this 29029. So 29,029 feet is the height of Everest. Mm -hmm. And so what they've done, Jesse Itzler and some yeah. other partners put together this race where they go to like six big tall mountains and they climb the mountain and ride a gondola down and climb the mountain. So the ascent, the equivalent is 29,029 feet. So it's as if you're climbing Everest, you're not really because you're climbing, you know, a mountain in Park City. But like that, that was going around in my head like, ooh, I should go do the 29,029, literally like two days before we were on that boat. And you're like, Steve, let's do the four by four by 48. And to me, the 29,029 was way hard. And the four by four by 48 was just mentally tough. And, and so it was like, yeah, it'll be my, stepping stone to the big one. So that's why I said yes. Love it. Yeah. So the thing that I love about David Goggins, who came up with this crazy idea about three or four years ago to do four by four by 48, is that if you understand his story, he, before he was the Navy SEAL, before he was this iconic person that will do crazy things, he was an overweight, out of shape guy on a couch. And he just was sick of, sick of that. And one day he just made a decision like enough's enough. And then he just started doing hard things and the hard things got progressively harder. And then he just kind of fell in love with the pain of progression. And so I don't know why most people like David Goggins, but that's really why I resonate because I have been the guy that's lazy on the couch and I didn't want to get up, put my running shoes on that morning yeah. and uh, take a look at David and like, okay, if he can do it. And he was like 280 pounds when mm -hmm. he started his journey. Yeah, Maybe we've we've all been there, right? Yeah. Kind of makes me think that the story like his, we all like the story of a hero, um, but we have the ability to write our own stories. It doesn't matter what past we had, what experiences, what hand we were dealt in life. Um, we all tell ourselves stories and rationalize and live in these stories in our past that have happened in our past that hold us back. But we're actually capable of, of writing a new story. And I think that's why people cling to that. It's because people deep down are aware of who they really are at the core, and they know they're not living their potential. And being able to see the inspiration of David Goggins go from, from poverty 
and where he was at to being one of the most disciplined human beings I've ever heard. Yeah. Um, gives people hope that I think that they can write their own story and become that person that they know they are in, in their core.